Right everyone, welcome back to here. Right, so this is going to be my arming sword build. So, I had this blade made for me by Richard Weaponsmith. You can buy blade blanks from websites or you can get someone to make it like I have. So this is a fully sort of finished blade, I just need to sharpen it basically, that's it. It's all been hardened and tempered and all that. And obviously put the handle on and all that. If you want to know any information on the blade, I'll get Richard to put it in the comments and then I'll put it in the description. So that's the blade. I'm still undecided on the guard and the pommel. The pommel will be made from this big bit of mild steel. It's 2.5 centimeters wide and five sort of tall. So it'll be five centimeter square and then shaped into whatever shape I want. I'm not sure, but I'll only be using about that much. I've got some 12 and a half mil thick steel for the guard. Again, not sure what shape, but I have a vague idea. The handle will be some kind of hardwood, and I think I'll do the handle one and a little bit hands. So it'll be one-handed, but it'll be it will leave just enough that if I want to, I could hold it with two, and my hand would be over the pommel slightly. But yeah, I don't want a two-handed sword. I, I don't really get on with those. I've, this one has always been planned as a one-handed sword. Right, so this is my idea for the guard. I may refine the shape once I've cut it out. I think the first thing I'll do is drill the holes. So I've just punched a couple of little divots in there just so I can make sure my drills are in the right place. If that obviously goes out of whack, I can always move this design slightly to one side. is like that little middle bit a bit easier if you do it this way so loads of filing just get a flathead screwdriver and just chisel it out see it come out so it's only a little bit but it saves you a reasonable bit of filing <laughs> Right, so that's the guard roughed out. It will need a little bit of shaping. I didn't film myself cutting the whole thing out because in all honesty, it was quite difficult and I wanted to concentrate as much as I could. What I learned in the end was, where this is quite thick, eventually the blade starts to seem to stick. So what I did, I would cut halfway through, take a adjustable spanner, put it on and bend the the cut open a little bit and then carry on and I found it sped up the cutting a lot better that way. So what I need to do now is just finish off the basic shape of this so these bits taper up to the right parts and stuff like that and then take the uh, take down to bare metal. I've got the wood for the handle. I think this should be big enough. I've worked out, if I held that thing in my hand, that would be reasonably comfortable, and this is big enough to make something as big as that. I hope you can see that then. <coughs> I won't be using that, I want to make my own handle, and this wouldn't be suited anyway. So, there'll be two parts, I'll cut the channel, glue them together, but because it's two parts and I've got no way of sort of pinning through easily, I'm going to make two metal collars at the top and bottom of the handle. So the way I'm doing this is I'm just going to get this piece of steel pipe and then just use a pipe cutter. If you've never used one of these, these are worth getting for cutting pipes. Because I've noticed 
Every single time you try and cut a pipe with a hacksaw, it never cuts straight. Well, mine don't anyway. Never. Whereas this you'll get a nice straight cut every time. <coughs> so that'll be one at definitely at the top and I'm thinking about putting one at the bottom. I'm going to try and tap this ring on the top here, just so it marks it, so I can know where to... ...file to. And if I didn't mention what the collar was for, it's just to strengthen up the handle. Because this is two parts, this will prevent it splitting. It'll be glued anyway. So I've got the collar on the top and the bottom. I can now shape the handle. Till I start getting close to the metal collars and then I'll shave it by hand then probably. Handle fits and is on and it tapers back so or well and it gets fatter as it comes back so your hand shouldn't actually want to go up. So we'll have a big old pommel there. That'd be about that big, that's gonna be a bit of a job I tell you. But yeah, the handle fits still needs tidying up i need to bring these rings so they fit properly but yeah that'll be perfect and it'll give me a tiny little bit if i wanted to try and get two hands on but i really want this to be a one-handed sword anyway Right, <clears throat> you might struggle to hear me because I'm wearing a mask, but I'm going to get these marks where I want them, that needs to be flattened down a bit I think, that edge, and then start tapering in that way, on an angle, if I can. This is where I am now. I think that's going to look pretty nice. And if I ever wanted to, I could get two hands on there. But it is more of a one-handed sword. But yeah, if I wanted to, I'd get my hand on there. So I need to do a little bit of adjusting. Uh, I think that the pommel would be better on. If I take that off, turn it round. It's just sticking over too much that side. Uh, but yeah, not a lot of work to do now, really. Most of it's just finishing off these bits because these are roughed out now.
So this is probably out of sync or out of order that people would normally do these kind of things. But I'm going to put an edge on this now. The handle, put it this way, this is pretty much ready to finish. I fancy putting an edge on it now. Um, and then I can tape the blade up and I don't have to touch it anymore. It will enable me to blue the guard, these collars and the pommel. And depending on if I feel like it, I may even blue the blade. And you do need to wear gloves doing this because when you're going back across, you're not putting your fingers against a sharp blade. already put a couple of coats of the blue on just wanted to test it for some reason there's a couple of little bits on this metal that it won't seem to color it's a little bit down there strangely won't color but it doesn't matter anyway so if you ever do do any gun bluing make sure you wear gloves uh, and you have to put uh, quite a few coats on it will gradually turn the metal black and to get an even coat in you will need to put quite a bit on it will come out quite blotty at first but the more you do it the darker it gets the better it looks and also when you have finally done it a coating of oil will make it look lovely the metal is blued um, the little patches I might be able to fill those in with a black marker pen because I've done that before and it doesn't actually show so yeah it should hide it quite well this handle for now I'm going to dye it red so it's something different black red silver uh, may still black I may still blue the blade though still not sure yet but um you know i think a proper nice red handle might look nice but i have bought some um what do you call it uh leather cord 1.5 millimeter leather cord to um wrap this handle because i think it might be better wrapped but this will be this will be alright for now. I'm going to work on the scabbard now. So I've marked this both sides. This side I'll chisel this out of both sides. And why I've got the mark on the other side is so I can then mark around, cut this off to shape. And also I'll know how far I can make these come in. Because I only want to have about, I don't know five mil at most i do not want the 12 mil there i'm just going to mark this from standing nice so when i chisel up to the line it won't blow out make sure when you do a sheath like this scabbard i mean um you leave plenty of room because what you can do is make it too tight and then you can't get sawed in and out so it's time to put the leather on the scabbard I don't really need to sand this too much it just needs to be how it is don't need to be smooth i've put a line down the center 
to help me when I fold the leather round, make sure the line is perfectly straight all the way down. I've marked about a four mil line down each side of this so that I can put the holes in, wrap it round, and then that'll be sewed. Put these holes through. So I'll carry on, do the holes all the way long, and then you'll see me sewing it. And what I probably will do as well is put glue on this. I won't put it all the way around because I don't want it near the edge where I'm sewing. But as long as this side's covered, it will hold the um, leather so it don't slip up and down. Right, <clears throat> I've never really done um, stitching in this sort of style. As in a big long bit, you know, like this. It's normally a bit sandwiched together. So I don't really know if I'm doing the right kind of stitching, but I'm pretty sure it will hold. Should look all right. And yeah, well, it'll do. But I reckon it'll work. It's just I don't know what, if I'm doing even slightly the right technique. Probably not. But um, <laughs> don't matter, does it? So I've done the leather. A little bit dirty at the minute, needs cleaning and uh, a little bit of finishing, but that's all right, you know, that's that's hard and that's like what I want it to be. Uh, I need to do another strap there, which I'm going to do at the end, that'll just be a quick thing. So I'm going to attempt to do the shape now, which will be might be difficult. Um, I'm going to see how I go with this. Um, because yeah, a lot of this is just doing it as you go along. So what I'm going to attempt to do is wrap the brass round and then solder the edge. So it'll be one piece on. And then I can put a little pin through or something, glue it on, put a pin in to stop it coming off. But it's going to be trial and error this because I've only ever done one of these before and it was slightly different to this. Although with this end, I may be able to get a... I rivet through that end like I did on the other one saying that. So I'm going to cut that out and see how it shapes around. <sighs> right, that was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> but it's on. It's uglier on the other side, but it's on and that's all that matters. This will all be black anyway, so the stitching won't show so obviously. <clears throat> but that is on, it's glued on and nailed on and everything, so that should be fine. Um, all I need to do now is, and the solder didn't work on that at all. So I just need to bend this around the top and basically nail that on as well. Right, what I'm going to attempt to do with this, I will show you. I've folded it over so it'll catch, its, catch in on itself. And then should be able to put this on. Hammer it down flat, put the pins in. Right, I'm just going to dye it now, I'll show you that. Uh, I won't do the finishing bit in here, because it's half ten at night. I'll show you, you'll see that next anyway, it just won't be in here, it won't be today. So there's the arming sword finished. I couldn't finish the video in the shed because to be honest, when I finished this last night, it was uh, 10.30 in the evening. Actually, I don't think I stopped till 11 o'clock at night because I wanted to just get it done. Very happy with it. Um, if you didn't know, this is inspired by Game of Thrones, basically. I didn't want to do a Game of Thrones copy sword, but I just wanted my own, my own arming sword <clears throat> but made by myself. But I ain't really got the capabilities of doing the blade. So I got a friend to do the blade and then I did the rest. So I've got my own personalised sword. Some of the bits I didn't show due to having to rush because of the time I think will be quite self-explanatory anyway. I didn't show how I did the collar but you know you'll see in the pictures it's pretty simple how it's done. And overall, yeah, very happy with it. There's a couple of things I would definitely do differently next time. I would not use those clips because it has dented the leather. 
But in all honesty, that doesn't really bother me because um, I sort of prefer the rustic look anyway. When things are a little bit too pristine, a bit too perfect, you don't want to use them. But um, yeah, very happy. The stitching on the sheath came out nice. The the shape at first, you know, I wasn't too happy with it, but I am now, and I do quite like that. Again, that sort of bit of a rustic look, but it's really solid, so that doesn't really matter. So let's have a quick look at the. I've left the blade. Again, not polished, because I actually prefer the look of it like that. I think, as I say, you're much more likely to want to use it. I'll call it an arming sword. It's probably more of a hand and half sword. It is sharp. I've given it a proper nice sharpen now. So when I do some bottle cutting and that, and some other cutting, it should cut very well. But yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. Cannot wait to get out and do a bit of cutting with it. Which I may do after this video, um, but it won't be on this video. So yeah, there you go. That's how to make an arm and sword yourself. I hope you found it helpful. Um, you may get some tips out of this. As I say, not all of the information is 100% there, but it will give you a guide. <clears throat> the balance for this sword is about 3 inches, which is about what it's supposed to be. Let's get this right before I let go of this. So well balanced about what you're supposed to have. And I'll write down all the other stats during the uh, the high quality pictures which you'll see next. So don't stop watching yet because you'll see some nice images of this now laid out. Right, hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to watch the rest of the video. See you later.